Well, hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah again. And welcome to our midweek Bible study here at the Burning Bush Baptist Church, where our pastor is Bishop David Denson, Jr., and serving alongside him, his beautiful wife, First Lady Lori. We welcome you to another time of study. And what a privilege, really, really, what a privilege it is to be able to come together as a church body in freedom and study the word of God. Amen. amen. No, we need to say amen on that one. And to God be the glory. And we have been talking about the mantle. And the last couple of weeks, our bishop has been talking about maturing, maturity. And we're going to continue in that same vein with this lesson on today. And before I do that, I want to pray. Is that all right? Say amen. amen. <laughs> all right. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, God, how we bless you. You are so amazing. So awesome, awesome in all your ways. And there is nobody like you, God, nobody like you at all. So Father, we just pause to say thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your never ending love to us. Oh God, we are grateful today. Now Father, I ask that you would teach this lesson, minister this word to us, God that we would be better for your kingdom, Father, helping us to do more in 2024, God, as we strive to fulfill your purpose in our lives. So, Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that I pray. And may we all say amen, amen. and amen. Amen. As I said before, we've been talking about the mantle. Y'all say the word mantle. Man. Yeah, we got to get that word in our spirit because you know what? Prior to the last month of really talking about, preaching about, praying about mantle, we really didn't have the insight that we do today. And especially after coming out of Ishakar, there's some more revelation that we need to speak to with regard the mantle. So our subject for our lesson is maturing in your mantle. Because in order to reach the fullness of what God has for the mantle that is on each one of our lives, it's going to take maturing. It's going to take growth. It's going to take development. It's going to take advancing and involving to come into the fullness of what God has for each and every one of us. And I must tell you, whether you recognize it or want to pick it up or not, there's a mantle. There is a mantle for each and every one of us. And after coming out of Ishakar, man, I want that mantle. Whatever mantle God has for me, we got to personalize that thing. Say, I want my mantle. And I want to pick it up because we want to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. God didn't just put us here just to sit on the stump and do nothing. He's got purpose. Somebody said purpose. You, you know what I'm saying? Purpose. And look, as long as you got breath in your body on this, you got purpose. And we're going to talk about that today. Our summary says this. In the Bible, the mantle symbolizes authority, anointing, and what? Calling. It's a calling from God. When a mantle is passed from one person to another, it represents a transfer of spiritual authority or responsibility. Somebody say it's a responsibility. Yeah, Lord, it is a responsibility. And as we have talked about in past uh, lessons, in the Old Testament, we see examples of this with Elijah. He's passing his mantle to Elisha, signifying that Elisha now will carry on Elisha's work in ministry. And you know what? We can bring that right where we are here at the Burning Bush Baptist Church. As our bishop, right? He is passing on his mantles to us to help him in the work of the ministry. And here's the thing. It's all, it may not be the title that you think, but I tell you what, there is a mantle of servitude that we all can participate in. So whatever your role is, you just got to carry your mantle. 
You got to operate in it. Why? Because it's helping the body. So whether you are cleaning the church, whether you are teaching or serving on hospitality, whether you are cooking food, whether you are ministering to the young people, whether you are praying for someone, it's your mantle. And you are helping hold up the man of God's arms by participating and taking hold of that that God has on your life. All right? Now, the mantle in a biblical context is a powerful symbol of God's calling and empowerment. God has empowered us for the things that he has called us to do. It signifies a commissioning to carry out God's work and fulfill what? A specific purpose. So I got a specific call because here's the thing. What God has called me to do may not be what he has called you to do. And what he has called you to do may not be what he has called me to do. We have one of our mothers here who crochets these beautiful blankets. Y'all don't want me to crochet nothing. First of all, I don't even know where to get the needles or what. Oh, you probably, the little hook thing, right? And I got to get the yarn. And then here's the thing. I got to have the heart. She does it with such an incredible heart. She asked, do you have any little babies coming in your family? Any grandbabies being born? Because she has that heart desire, that mantle on her life to be able to produce a beautiful covering. Look, a mantle for your baby. And then she's going to leave a legacy with that because you'll remember what she did. You see what I'm saying? But that's her mantle. That's her gifting. That's her calling that she is operating in. And you're doing a beautiful job, mother. You're doing a beautiful job. And we appreciate that. (laughs) When receiving or taking up our mantle, here's the thing. How do we mature in what we have taken hold of? You picked it up. So now what you going to do with it? I believe mother, she didn't just pick up some yarn and some crochet hooks and just sat there. She had to mature into it to a level to where she is operating in today. We need to study. Somebody say study. Study. We need to learn and grow so that we can mature in our assignment from God. Hear me. Maturity is not only based by what we know. All right, it ain't about all that you know, but it's about what you continually, somebody say, I got to continue to put it into practice. You got to continue. You don't do one thing today and stop. My, uh, uh, those of you who are great cooks, you didn't just put on a pot of beans one time and stop. Sometime it took a few years to get it right. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You had to continually work on that thing to get it right. And so with that being said, our scripture reading is coming out of Colossians chapter 1, and then we're going to look at verses 9 through 11. And I want to read this text, y'all, because it is so good and so encouraging and insightful for maturing in your mantle. And this is what it said. For this reason, since the day we heard about it, stop right there. I'm just going to say since the day we heard about these mantles, We have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom, with insight into his purposes and in understanding of spiritual things. Next verse. So while they're bringing it up, so that... Here it is, so that you and I will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, displaying admirable character, moral courage, and personal integrity to fully please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily, y'all see that? Steadily growing in the knowledge of God with deeper faith, Clear insight and what fervent love for his precepts. And the last verse 11. We pray that you may be strengthened. How many of y'all want to be strengthened? Look. And invigorated. That's us, y'all. With what? All power. Not a little bit of power. Not piece of power, but all power according to his glorious might to attain 
every kind of endurance and patience with joy. That's our scripture reading as we talk about maturing, maturing in your mantle. Number one, maturing in your mantle, it requires what? Knowing and being filled with the knowledge of his will. There's a requirement to the mantle that you've picked up. Look what the scripture says. For this reason, for this reason, since the day you heard about this mantle, since the day you've been praying about this mantle, since the day that you've been taught about this mantle, we ain't stopped praying for you. And we're asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. What is that talking about? We are praying for divine insight. Paul is stressing the need for continuous prayer. You cannot carry this mantle without prayer. It comes from a divine source, our holy God, and you got to seek his face for how to carry this mantle because it's serious. This is God's purpose for your life. You've got to be in prayer. Jesus was in prayer. Y'all know the mantle on his life. Thank God for him fulfilling God's purpose. And what did you see in the scripture? What did Jesus do? He would always go away and pray, seeking the will of the Father. Spiritual maturity happens as we continually, it's a continual thing, and consistently strive to grow in our knowledge and relationship with him. He says in his word, grow in the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Seeking God's will and purpose for the mantle? What are you asking? How do you want to use me for your glory, God? Because, see, this is not about us. It's all about him. So as we are carrying this mantle, God, how do you want it to be manifested in this vessel? Because we talk, we are not our own. And we are here on assignment to bring God glory. As you begin to put God's word into your heart and your mind and you learn to obey it, you will steadily grow in maturity toward him. Amen. See, God tells us. He tells us how to live. And he tells us what his will is. Where is his will? Is in his word. In them 66 books, he has listed out how you ought to live and what he wants you to do. Therefore, we ought to study and learn what God says. And I love this right here. Until the knowledge floods us to such a degree that doing his will flows into our conduct and our behavior. It ought to be in you. Like Bishop said, when, when, the, when the pipe gets, when the water runs through, the, the pipe gets wet. When that word runs through you, it ought to be flowing out of you like rivers of living water. And you ought to be desiring. There ought to be, a, there ought to be an urgency in you to fulfill his purpose on your life. Y'all, this is serious times we're in. Amen. And whatever your purpose is, whatever the mantle is on your life, you got to mature in it. Because you, I just think in my sanctified imagination, I don't want to get to glory. And God said, you didn't finish it. You didn't finish the work and you could have finished it because I gave you everything that you needed. But you didn't seek me out. You didn't study. You didn't commune with me. Scripture says this, teach me to do your will so I may please you, God, for you are my God. It's personal. Maturing in your mantle is a personal work, but it's a necessary work. And it says, let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Because you know when we get to doing it our own way and going our own way, we get unbalanced. We get unsteady, we get a little shaky, and it's easy to be detoured and distracted from the call that's on your life. I heard it said, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. So when you open up your heart to be taught and mature, the student, the Holy Spirit, he'll come and he'll teach you and lead you into all that God is calling each and every one of us to do. It is so important that you hear me and do not let the teachings that we have received with regard to the mantle, don't lay them by the wayside. Don't leave your mantle. 
pick it up and mature in what you've been called to do. You got to seek the face of God. If you don't know, seek his face. He said, if you, if you don't know, ask him. And I really believe sometimes we know what our mantle is, but <laughs> we don't want to do it because we're afraid of it. We're afraid of the requirements. We're afraid of the commitment. So we tend to leave it to the side and, and, it, and it remains dormant, but it doesn't change the fact that that mantle is there for you. And when you don't pick it up, you know what that is called? Disobedience. It's called disobedience. We don't like it, but it's true. You know what God has called you to do. Here it is. And it's not sometimes the things that we think, oh, I, 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 it's not a porter. It's not a this. Maybe God has called you to minister to someone who is sick at home by just picking up the phone and calling them once a week and saying, God loves you. I was thinking about you. Are you okay? I just want to read some scriptures to you. I want to share the word of God with you. It's in your heart. Do it. Amen. It's important and it's necessary. It's necessary. Number two says this. Maturing in your mantle requires spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom and understanding. Spiritual wisdom, God's wisdom. You know what? We want to operate in what we think is right, what we think we know. We don't know nothing. I've come to realize I don't know nothing, but we serve a God that knows everything. And he says this, if you lack wisdom, ask me. If you lack, ask me, and I'll give it to you. I will show you and tell you everything you need to know. But my question is, how many of us ask him? Lord, show me the way you would have me to go. Show me how to work with this mantle, God. I want to have an understanding that I know only you can give. And then that ties us right into the knowledge of his will. As we are seeking him out in his, in his word, the Bible, God reveals some things. Have you ever been studying in the word of God and stuff just pops off the page? Lord, my God, that's it. That's it. That's how, and then you're being filled with his knowledge. And then, look, 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 then his wisdom is instructing you on what to do with the knowledge. But it takes a requirement from you. You got to seek him out and ask him. There has not been a time yet that I have asked God for something in terms of wisdom. I've asked him for some things and he didn't give it to me because he's a wise God and I'm glad he didn't. Hindsight, I'm so glad God didn't give me what I, I might have been mad at the time because it's what I thought I needed. But in the wisdom of God, he said, that's not what you need. So, you know, I'm going to save you from yourself. That's what he did. Save me from myself by not giving me something that I thought. I, that's the wisdom of God. And then as we grow and we mature, we begin to accept and receive his wisdom because we realize that uh, our stuff ain't all that great. We come to realize we really don't know anything. And then God in his greatness and in his kindness, he just sits and waits patiently for us. He said, they finally got it. Like my mama would say, you know what? It might have taken you a long time, but I'm glad you got it. As long as you get it. Don't leave here without getting the wisdom that God has for you. And then he says, ask me, ask me and I'll give it to you. It's about seeking and grasping the wisdom and the spiritual insight. Have you ever just sat down with God? I now understand why Jesus was still away and go to the mountain and pray. He would, oh my God, that was some good times, good times. He would go, so you take that time yourself, follow the pattern of Jesus. Go to your secret place and just sit down and have a little talk with Jesus. Ask him. Sit still long enough that he can communicate some wisdom and insight about your particular situation. Amen. That he can share with you what this mantle on your life is going to do for his glory. If you would just sit still and be still and then write the vision. The Bible says write the vision and make it plain. Let him commune with you because he'll do it. I'm just going to say for a Chevy. I didn't sit still long enough for him to give, I'm, I'm getting up. 
I'm five minutes. And God said, wait, I'm not done yet. I want to commune with you. I want to share with, with you some things about this mantle that is on your life. I've got an assignment for you. I don't want you to be surface mantle carriers. I want you to get in deep. I want you to mature in your mantle. Number three says this. Maturing in your mantle requires walking worthy of the Lord. See, that takes maturity right there. Y'all know it does. Because to walk worthy of the Lord is to walk in obedience to what he has called you to do. And sometimes in our flesh, we just don't want to do it. Sometimes we just want to act up. Sometimes we just want to tell people off. Sometimes we just want to be lazy. Sometimes we just don't want to do it. But to mature in your mantle, it requires walking worthy of the Lord. Look at what the scripture says. So that you, so, say, so that me, point to yourself, so that I will walk worthy in a manner of the Lord, displaying admirable character. So that means as you're carrying this mantle, your character matters. How you treat people matters. How you conduct yourself, it matters. Because it's about maturing. And here's the thing with moral courage. I like how it puts that preface in there. Moral courage. Not, not your courage. Moral courage. Doing the right thing. Having the courage to stand up for what is right. And personal integrity. You know, integrity is what you do when ain't nobody else looking. And it is to fully please him. What in all things, not some things. This is about maturity, y'all. The things we used to do, we don't do anymore. The things we did prior to our Issachar conference, we're not doing it anymore because we're maturing in our mantle. It is not enough to know God's will. It's just not enough to know his will. It's not enough to possess wisdom and understand. It's, that's not enough. It's good, but it's not enough. The principal thing, the critical thing, is putting into practice what we know. We got knowing the will of God is of no value until we commit our lives to doing it. That's walking worthy, y'all. You can know a thing, what the Bible said, to him who knows to do good and do it not is sin. It's some serious stuff, y'all, but it is what is required as we are maturing in our mantle. Look at this. When it talks about walking, it is setting our lives and our conduct after Christ, we want to follow in the, in, the, in, the, in the life that he led. He was obedient unto God. And I love this. When it talks about worthy, it is having the weight of it. You know, I was thinking about that today, having the weight, walking worthy of the call. Our bishop has assigned me to teach this lesson on today. Walking worthy, there's a weight, y'all. There's a way to teach the people of God, those who he's entrusted over, who he's now put me in front to teach this gospel, to teach this word. It's a weight. I feel the weight because I, uh, I reverence God first. I, re I respect my bishop and I honor my bishop. So I don't come with this haphazardly. This mantle that's been given to me, it's responsibility. It's a weight and I feel it. And I'm here to tell you, feel the weight of what God has called you to do. Feel it. It's that important because you value the assignment. That's what it's about. As I talked about our mother here who crochets those beautiful blankets, there is a weight there because she cares about how she creates these beautiful blankets. She just doesn't throw them together. It's in her heart. She values the gift that she's been given to even create these beautiful pieces. The weight in how we serve, not just coming up here to serve, to clean, no. I wanna serve and I wanna clean to the glory of God. That's the weight. I do it with joy. I do it out of a heart. And a, and a desire to serve him, the weight of it. Our, um, it. It's about your value. It's about maturing in the mantle. Our walk, listen to this, is to weigh as much as the walk of Christ. 
Let me put it right here. Put, put a pin right there. When you think about growing closer and closer to Christ, when you walk with him and you talk with him and he tells you he, that you're his own, that you're connecting with how much he loves you. So now you're connecting with the weight of what he did for you. So now what he has called us to do, there ought to be a weight. You ought to feel something. That's all it's saying. And it's about maturing in the mantle. It's about maturity, y'all. It takes time to get there. I would, hasn't been here and I'm still growing in it. But it's about growing and, and having the insight of feeling what Christ did for you because he loved you so very much. And here's the thing. The will of God is to control our behavior as much as it did the behavior of Christ. Don't you want that? God, control my way. Control my tongue, God. Control my actions, oh God. Draw me nigh unto thee, God, that I might do your will. Because you know that's what Jesus said in John 6, 38. He says, for I have come down from heaven, what? Not to do my own will. He didn't come to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. We don't come to do our own will, y'all. We come to do the will of God who sent us for purpose. Maturing in the mantle is how we all do more in 2024. And it doesn't matter what your mantle is as long as you are maturing and growing in it and honoring God, operating in what he has called you to do. And in that, see, see now, now our next verse is now that you are walking admirably, moral courage with personal integrity to please God. Now you're going to bear some fruit. And they say, you'll know them by their fruit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? What kind of fruit is you, are you producing with the mantle that is on your life? You should be bearing fruit. What in every good work, there's a mantle of good works. All bringing glory to God. It is critical that we understand everything that we do is for his glory. It ain't, this ain't about us. It's all about him. And he is looking to see you all are growing, but now I need you to go another level in me. Maturing in your mantle. Good works. Good works. What is good works? Serving. Serving with a, with, with, with a joyful heart ministering unto the people. There are people that you and you and you are going to minister to that I will never see. Amen. There are those who I'll minister to that you won't see. Amen. I like to put it this way. There's, there are people that when you touch, there is a specific touch that God has given you to give to somebody else. Amen. Or your voice, you when you pass by someone just to say, God bless you, I'm praying for you. There are those who God has waken up in the midnight hour and you wonder why you're waking up. Pray. Amen. Say, God, what are you calling me for? God, what's, what's on your heart? Pray what's on your heart. If God is waking you up, say, God, what do you need of me? And sometimes it's just to offer a prayer. And sometimes we feel like it's not enough. No, it's everything. Somebody somewhere is in need of that prayer. So I encourage you. You wake up at night, pray, ask God, get your Bible out. Say, Lord, I don't know anything else, but I do know that you are my shepherd and I shall not want. I know that you lead me in the path of righteousness for my name. Say, I know that you have called me to go ye therefore, God. I know it. So, God, I don't know where I'm going today, but I know right now I can go in this word. And I can say, God, lift up, the, we lift up this nation, oh God. We lift up this election, oh God. I lift up those children who are suffering, God. I don't know the names, God, but you know them. Because of the mantle, the call. We have to pay attention and discern what God is speaking, y'all. We are growing in such a, we can't take our Christian walk for granted. There is work to be done. And we are the workers in the vineyards, and God is using us to do the work. That's why we have to mature in the mantle. It is necessary. It is, I must say, especially in this time, it is critical. It is critical that we mature in the mantles that God has on our lives. Bearing good fruit, being kind, being loving, being giving. Being forgiving, 
Yes, it is a responsibility. And yes, there is a weight, but I tell you what, it's all for the glory of God. And he will not put on us more than we can bear. We live out our faith by bearing fruit in every good work and continuously growing in the knowledge of God. As I said before, it's not enough to just know it. We got to walk in what we know. And then people will see it on you. Your light will shine because you're walking in what you know. You have moved past head knowledge, but you have put into action. And here's the thing. Faithfulness in small things. Despise not small beginnings. Everything started with one step, right? <laughs> Those blankets that mother over here crochets, it started with one stitch. <laughs> and now we have these big, beautiful blankets. So despise not small beginnings. Zechariah tells us in chapter 4, 10, do not despise, despise small beginnings for the Lord rejoices. God, that's good right there. He rejoices to see the work begin. He's excited that you even took the first step. So how do we get to where we are to be in Christ? We got to take the first step. Even in fear, take the first step. Because see, all I have to do is take one step. There's a song, I, I heard, uh, 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 old gospel hymn, and he'll do the rest. Take your step. Well, the step happened when we picked up, we picked up the mantle. So now we got to mature in that that we have picked up. Somebody say, amen, it's your beginning. And here's the thing. He said, he who is faithful in what is least, he is also faithful in much. So if you'll be faithful in a little bit, don't worry about, well, I just come up here and I clean. No, 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 no. It's little things. God going to bless you with much. Oh, I just gave a little bit. No, 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 no. God going to bless. It's in the little things. Be faithful with that. Mature in that. I even remember in the text with uh, Elisha, start in the little things. Started following after, started serving after, started staying close. And God was maturing him as from the little things. And then he grew him up to be able to do great things. The same with you. Living worthy lives that aim to honor and please God, that's what maturing in your mantle is all about. It's about being trustworthy and diligent in small responsibilities in preparation for greater ones. You remember when y'all had, your kids were little? Y'all, you know, before you left them home by themselves, right? You know, for, you know, so you say, okay, baby, I know I did for my kids. I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little teeny bit of responsibility. I'm going to step outside in, into the neighbor's yard for five minutes. I'm going to see how you do. And I see how you're going to respond to that responsibility. Then you do good with that. Then the next time I gave you 10 minutes. Then we gave him a half an hour. Then you give him an hour. And then you give him a half a day. See, we've got to see if you're going to be faithful with the little bit. The same thing God does with us. You can't jump up here and be bishop tomorrow. Just walked into church today. Well, we don't know what you're going to do. We don't know what you're going to do with teaching. We don't know what you're doing with praying. We don't know what you're going to do with, 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 with uh, encouraging somebody else. We don't know what you're going to do with free. We don't know all that yet. So all those little things will build you up to the fullness of what God has called each and every one of us to do. Somebody say amen. amen. That's some good stuff right there. And aren't you glad? See, God is so, he, he's all that and everything we need. Because could you imagine how big our heads would be if God just said, hey, you bishop today. We only, we, we only, you think you're crazy. No, no, you'd be really going crazy. Because all those little responsibilities prepare you for the big work that God has called you to do. So right where you are, be committed. Be faithful. Be prayerful. When you get a chance to be on the prayer line and pray, stay with that thing. Pray. Pray with everything you got. Study that word. Come on that prayer line and say, no, something going to happen this morning. I believe God has called me for this mantle, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to speak this word with everything I've got, and I am expecting a move of God. You are, see, God will move just like that. That's how we mature in this mantle that is on our lives. And I want to stop right here because sometimes we think, I didn't think really. I said, I don't know about this mantle. God, you would give me a mantle? I'm telling you, yes, you have a mantle. 
You have a mantle, whether you want to believe it or not. The devil's job is to make you think you don't have no mantle. You're not good enough to have a mantle, but yes, you are. Yes, you are. No matter your age, you have a mantle. Even sometimes you, you ever think of little kids? Little kids can say some of the, the wisest things, and they have, it's a little mantle. <laughs> a little bitty mantle, but it's a little mantle. And sometimes I've even seen some of the kids on some of the social media, little ones, and they, and they say they don't even know what, they don't have the fullness and understanding what all that they're doing, but they believe that daddy can be healed. I've seen them praying for daddy. God bless him. Lord, touch him. Lord, bless him. God, make him well. They're believing where they're at. And they're start little bitty steps, but watch that little child when they get to be 20 and, you know, 20 and 30. It started somewhere. Y'all see little kids, they can sing. And y'all say, look at that little baby. Boy, 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 when she get a little old and get some seasoning on her, she going to sing. But it started way back here. It's the same with us. God has not forsaken any of you, any of us. But we got to operate and mature in what we already have. Somebody say, amen. amen. Look at this. Maturing in your mantle requires, somebody say it requires, operating, somebody say operating in the power of God. We pray that you be strengthened and invigorated. My God, I told you right, I need to be invigorated right now. I need to be strengthened right now according to his glorious might. You, how many of y'all know God ain't lacking nothing in the area of power? God don't lack nothing. So that's a prayer. This is a prayer right here, y'all. This is a prayer we can pray. You wonder sometimes, what can I pray? Pray for Chevy. I pray Chevy is strengthened and invigorated with all power according to his glorious might. You can pray that for your seniors. You can pray that for your bishop. You can pray that for your children. And right now, you can be praying for some of our, uh, those who are running for office, okay? I'm not going to put nothing out there, but some folks might need, uh, a, a particular somebody might need to be strengthened with and invigorated right about now. Amen? <laughs> to up, look, look, whoo, my God, this is so good. I want, according to his glorious might, to attain every kind, every kind, somebody say every kind, of endurance, and patience with joy. Who needs endurance? I do. Because don't you get tired? Doesn't this Christian journey get a little struggle? Hey, get a little rough sometimes, does it not? But this is a prayer with, uh, to attain every kind of endurance and patience. Oh my God. With joy? You cannot do that in the flesh. How do you endure when you're going through with joy? It is only through the divine spirit and power of our holy God. So we need to operate in the power of God by faith for endurance, patience, and the spirit of joyfulness. What? As we face trials and challenges. Because let me tell you something. As you are maturing, y'all ever hear a thing called growing pains? Y'all ever heard about those? They hurt, don't they? So goes the natural. So goes the spiritual, right? So we need God's power to sustain us in that process. Only God's power can infuse the strength in us to make us endure any and all trials with a spirit of joyfulness. Only God can do that, y'all. And as we come to rely and depend on him, you will see it manifested in your life. How do I know I've been there? I've been there. I'll ask you, have you ever been going through something? But then there is a joy on the inside. Come on, when you start to worship and praise God, a joy on the inside, it takes you through. And you look back over your life and say, God, how did I do this thing? Only God. That's why when you hear people say only God, because they know only God. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. But that's what he gives you equipping you to carry your mantle. You didn't pick it up, but let me tell you something. No, the devil coming at you. What they say where there's a revelation, there's going to be a revolution. And I dare say there has been a revelation in the mantle, right? We know some stuff now. Don't think the devil going to sit by and just chill. No, he got to come at you. And he's coming hard because he know what the next level is. So he said, if I can take him out now, I, I can, I'll be all right. But we got to press in. 
We got to press hard. We got to stay committed because it ain't, it ain't easy. But God is all powerful. He's all knowing. He gives you the strength. And what is that word? The, he invigorates. It's like a refreshing. It's a renewal. It's an energy that allows you to go forth with joy. That's what I love. With, only God with joy. And I just can't help but think to my mind, and this is not, look, 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 look. I am not, I'm not pushing any political party, but I got to tell you this. My girl is up there, look, look, with this mantle that's on her. And she is persevering with joy. Now, we don't know what she's doing when you don't see her. But when, when we see her on television, there is a joy. There's an exuberance. There's an invigoration. That's just, a, I, just an example that I see that we can get a picture of what this thing looks like. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. And that's what he wants us to know. We got to mature in the mantle that is on our lives. This is important, you know. Now, here's the thing. Here, some of the trials that we face, because, you know, it ain't, it ain't, you know <laughs> life gets a little tough, does it not? Amen. So some of the trials that we can face as we're carrying these mantles, you know, disease, death, mm. accidents, poverty, bullying, mm. people talking about you, people getting on your nerves, you know. Mm. You, you got struggles with your finances. Negative. But here's the thing. This negative stuff that's coming at you. And you're trying to pursue the will of God and fulfill his purpose in your life. This is why it's important that we have endurance during the trials and temptations. Because we know that the testing of our faith, what it leads to spiritual maturity. James says it like this. Consider it nothing but pure joy, my brothers and sisters. When you fall into various trials, he says this. Because the testing of your faith through experience, this is what it's doing. It's producing what? Endurance. It's leading to spiritual maturity and what? Your inner peace. It reminds me of when I see some of the older people and, and they're just sitting there and, and you're going through trials and they're sitting there just chilling. They got the inner peace. They're like, baby, it's going to be all right. This too shall pass. You going to make it. Weeping may endure for a night, baby, but joy cometh in the morning. You going to be all right. And I'm like, why are you just sitting there rocking? They rocking because of the relationship. They are rocking because they know the peace that surpasses all understanding. They are rocking because they know they're in the will of God and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They are rocking because they are committed to fulfilling God's purpose in their lives. That's maturing with the mantle that's on y'all. You know, we ain't, we ain't all got there yet, but y'all know the stuff that we used to cry over. We don't cry over no more. Y'all know. You know, I, I remember when we were younger, ain't no food in the house. It was food, but it was frozen. But I, did, well, I thought in my young, inexperienced mind, ain't no food in the house. Big mama said, there's food, baby. There's some rice, and there's that meat in the freezer. I, I, I'm going to make you a meal, and it's going to satisfy you, and it's going to be all right. Don't you worry about a thing. You know, grandmothers and big mamas had that way of just smoothing over the chaos. That was the mantle. That was the mantle. That was the mantle. Amen and amen. amen. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. You know what I like? The biblical concept of endurance, you know what it entails? It, it, it entails persevering through trials. Resisting sin because, see, when you're going through something, it's a little easier to sin, you know what I mean? Because, well, I just might as well give in. No, you got to resist sin in endurance. And you got to remain faithful to God's purpose because that's what maturing in the mantle does. Scripture encourages believers to cultivate endurance by what? Shedding unnecessary burdens and maintaining a focused mindset on Jesus as the foundation and pinnacle of your faith. Shedding unnecessary burdens. I wanted to put that in there. Because as you mature in the Lord, you mature to a place where you say, you know what? That wasn't a burden for me to carry. 
That takes a moment to get there, right? Because when you're younger, you're taking on everybody's burden. But as you mature in the Lord, and as you spend some time with him, he shows you what burdens you ought to take on. And then those burdens, you know how to go to God in prayer. Prayer, I'm telling oh my God. Prayer is a great burden reliever. Because you lay on the altar, hey my God, and get happy right here. And God says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Take them to him and leave them there. He says, come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden. And I, he says, I give you the rest. But I need you to come to me in prayer. That's the value. That's the significance of prayer. When you are maturing in this mantle, you got to have a prayer life. Somebody say, I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have my secret closet. I got to have corporate prayer. Hear me. But I need my secret closet. That I can go before God and lay prostrate before him and weep to my soul. To my soul is happy. That's the kind of prayer. That's the kind of prayer. That's where you got to get to. That takes maturing. But I tell you what, you go through enough stuff, it'll take you there. Am I right, mothers? Huh? Those who've been on the journey a little bit longer, honey, they can know, honey. Baby, this one of them things. See, this is what you can tell your daughters and your sons. And they come crying every week. It's okay to come to mama, baby, but you know mama ain't going to be here forever. But there is a God, there is a God that you can go to. Hey, he ain't going nowhere. That you got to have your prayer, that you got to be prostrate before him. Carry your stuff to him directly. Because there comes a time, hear me, that mama's prayers will go so far, but God gave you a voice. God gave you a sound and God is listening. He's listening for a sound from your voice. He didn't give you them lungs for nothing. He didn't give you air and breath for nothing. He needs to hear you. He needs to hear you. Tell your children, baby, yeah, mama gonna pray for you. I'm in the wings, but God needs a direct lines from you. And he gave you access. That's what maturing in the mantle is all about. We endure with prayer, praise, and worship. 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 I tell people when you're going through that mantle and it feels like it's too heavy and I can't carry it anymore, worship. When I don't know what to do, do what you know to do. Worship. Lay prostrate before God. Because you know what worship is doing? It's saying, God, this mantle is too big for me. And I don't know what to do, God. But I know you are bigger than anything that I'm facing, God. So I'm going to take this time to worship. I'm going to lay prostrate in your presence, oh God. And I'm just going to honor you, God. And I'm going to thank you for this mantle. Because it was specific for me. It was tailor-made, God. And maybe, just maybe, you were waiting for me to come before you and worship you. Instead of complaining that I worship and I thank you for what you have given me to advance your kingdom. I thank you for entrusting me with this mantle. I thank you for strengthening me with this mantle. I thank you for invigorating me with this mantle. I thank you for empowering me with everything I need to come to the fullness and mature with this mantle that is on my life. Oh, that's some good news. And then here's the thing. When you worship, it is, that takes you to a place of peace. It's like, God, I don't know how you do this thing. And this mantle, oh my God, it is heavy. But God, I got a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, I just feel so good. I just know it's going to be all right. That's what Big Mama said. That's what my granddaddy said. It's going to be all right. But it comes through our worship, y'all. It comes through our praise. It comes through our reverence and acknowledging God is an ever-present help in our time of need, that he will never leave us, and he will never, never Never forsake us. I got something it's funny right here out of that serious moment. I was watching a little video and this little girl that stole, she stole some candy and her mama would say, I'm going to take you to the jail. She goes, no mama, no mama, please mama. I will never, ever, ever, never, never, never. I won't do it no more mama. <laughs> never. <laughs> that was kind of a cute thing, but it, it reminded me of that. And Jesus is saying, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. And I would never take you to a place that I wouldn't carry you all the way through. Never, never, never. That's what maturing is all about, trusting God, even in the tight spaces, even in the difficult moments. And this is how we get to inner peace through prayer, trusting and depending on God. It's like stuff you used to be overwhelmed by. It doesn't bother you anymore. There's a scripture in Psalms that says this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, hey, but now I've been through some stuff. I keep and I honor your word with loving obedience. With loving obedience. That's what it's all about, you all. It is, it is just maturing with this mantle that is on our lives, you know what it is about? It's about honoring God. It's about reverencing God. It's about thanking God. It's about trusting God. It's about really celebrating that God would even grace us to carry the mantle. That's what it's all, it's for his kingdom. And I don't know about you, but I'm just choosing now, hey, we're going, we, we, we're going in, y'all. We are pressing toward the mark of a high calling with a mantle that is on our lives because we are doing more in 2024. And I don't want God to give us, in, give any reason for him not to bless us as our bishop says. We're going to do everything, no matter what it is. I don't care if the task that you said, all I had to do was fold some napkins. Well, honey, it's the, I'm the, I got the mantle of napkin folding, and I'm going to do it to the glory of God. And let me tell you, y'all need these napkins. Somebody got to wipe their face. Somebody got to clean, you know, put the napkins so the food don't, so that's my mantle. I mean, it's a small thing, but it's huge. Anything that you do for God, it's huge. Anything that he calls you to do, it's huge. And we have to be like little children, just grateful. I'm just grateful to serve, y'all. I'm grateful to open the door. What the scripture say? I, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Just opening the door from somebody and they see your smile. In the parking lot ministry, they're developing that right now. And I'm believing and praying God asking God to bring young men in, young, young folks who would desire to do that. Teach them how to open up doors because that's a, 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 something that's been lost with our young people. They got to be taught. It's a mantle that we're passing on, showing them how. How to be chivalrous. <laughs> that's the word, chivalrous. Amen. So we have to do this. It's about passing it on. And here it is. We honor the mantle on our life. By being what? Responsible and maturing in it to bring glory to God. And I'm so thankful. It was brought to my attention the other day in, in a meeting. And uh, it was said, told, you know, just reminded us how we are all growing in the things of God in this ministry. And do you know, because we are an extension of our bishop, that he has passed on the mantle and that now it frees him up to do other ministry things at the bishop prick level? Amen. You see what I'm saying? So all of us, you all matter. All of it. It is vitally important. Important more than I can ever stress right now that you operate in it and own it. Ishakar said, embrace it. I want, didn't want to forget that. Embrace. Embrace this mantle. See, it says not only are you picking it up, embracing it. When you embrace it, you walk in it. When you embrace it, you own it. When you embrace it, you, there's manifestations of it in your life. Y'all see what I mean? If you, if you agree, say amen. amen. Say amen. So just say it's all about maturing. Don't you, you won't, here, here's the thing. Don't you want your kids, you say, y'all gotta, y'all gotta mature. <laughs> y'all gotta grow up. Well, that's what God is saying for us. You take this mantle, grow in it, serve God with your whole heart. And here's the thing, say, Lord, let my heart be ever right before you with this mantle that is on me. And as they said in prayer this morning, great and mighty works. Y'all remember Elisha, when he picked up the mantle, the many works that he did with the mantle that was on his life, served in obedience, did many great things. 
where you all, we all, can do great things. Because that's how we are doing more in 2024. Amen. Amen. Have you all been blessed? Have you been encouraged by this lesson today? And I pray no one leaves here feeling like they don't have anything to do or that they don't matter. Because with God, everybody matters and everybody has something to do. As they're passing um, the buckets here, let's continue to keep our bishop in prayer. And, you know, let's just celebrate God for our bishop. I, I tell you, with the mantle that is on his life, we want to walk close to our bishop. And when I say walk close, that means adhering to the words that he is speaking to us as God reveals them to him. Be obedient. Serve with a joyful heart. To see this man of God who came from a place that, you know, it, 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 it wasn't clear for a minute there, but we, our bishop, the mantle that's on his life, God has restored him. He's been able to travel and do some things. And it's just an awesome joy to be able to come together and he can look back at his church and say, they ain't missed a beat. We have taken what's been imparted to us and we're serving with joy. And here's the thing, we're bringing honor to God and we're making our bishop's heart smile. And even now, even as he is recovering, that he is able to take off a couple of days and go to be refreshed and spend time with his beautiful bride. That's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing because why? We're taking the mantle that has been given to us and we are operating in it. And that's what maturity is all about. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this time of study. We thank you for blessing your people. We thank you that you are an amazing God, Father. And I pray if there's anyone here who has not received you as Lord and Savior, that they would open their heart, God, and receive you into their heart as Lord and Savior. God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the mantle that rests on each and every one of our lives. And I pray, God, as we go forth, that we will continue to grow and mature in the mantle that is on each and every one of us, and that you would receive your glory. It is in the master's name of Jesus that we do pray. And may we all say amen and amen. God bless you.